Hello friends, welcome to this video on finding the correlation coefficient of the random variable x and y. We are going to consider the problem in a continuous case. That is the random variable x and y are going to be continuous random variable rather than that of being a discrete case. In which case we will see the problem now directly. The problem says that the two random variables x and y have a joint PDF given by f of x comma y is 2 minus x minus y for 0 less than x less than 1 and 0 less than y less than 1. The function is going to take 0 elsewhere. We have been asked to find the correlation coefficient of the x and y and we have also been asked to say what type of relationship do the random variables x and y hold for. So starting with the first one correlation coefficient, we will go with a road map. The correlation coefficient of x comma y is going to be given or denoted by rho of x comma y and is going to be given by the formula covariance of x y by sigma x sigma y. The numerator is covariance of x comma y which can be estimated using the formula e of x y minus e of x into e of y. The term involved over here the first one e of x y is got by double integral x y into f of x comma y dx dy. We know that because if there are going to be two variables we need two integration. The input is taken first in and then multiplied with the joint probability function. The second term involved over here is e of x which is now given by the formula x into f of x dx and the second term involved third term involved is e of y which is given by the formula e of y equal to y into f of y dy. If it is x here only one variable so only one integration take this input over here first and then multiply it with the joint marginal density function of x. If it is y here it is only one variable so only single integration multiply with the input the marginal density function of the random variable. Now this completes the numerator part covariance which is e of x y minus e of x into e of y. Now coming to the denominator, the denominator has sigma x into sigma y. What is the sigma x? Sigma x is nothing but standard deviation of the variable x which is given by root over the variance of x. How to estimate this variance of x? We have already learned that the variance of x is given by the formula e of x square minus e of x the whole square. Now the terms involved over here is going to be e of x square. So e of x square is got by integral x square into f of x dx. Don't think that x square is going to be two variables. It is not two variable. It is the single variable x which has been squared. So x is the only variable. So only one integration over here. The input is taken first and then it is multiplied by its marginal density function. So the first term e of x square is going to be integral x square into f of x dx. The second term is e of x the whole square and this can be got already estimated through this function over here. Just you take it and then square it. We will be done with the variance of x. After getting the variance you will be taking the square root of x which will give us sigma x. The sigma y part over here can be solved in a similar pattern to it. Just replacing the variable x with that of the variable y. Now over here we need the e of x value. e of x is given by x into f of x. This now involves the term f of x. This f of x is nothing but the marginal density function which we know that is given by unlike poles uh, ripple each other, unlike poles attract each other. So like poles it is going to be going to be x which is being going to be attracted by dy. So it is going to be x which is going to be attracted by dy. So integral x with respect to dy and so y will now be integrated with respect to x. You just complete the integration, get these quantities and then we are now ready to start the problem with. So to begin with, we will just start estimating the function f of x. What is our f of x? It is integral f of x comma y with respect to the variable dy because x means we have to integrate with respect to y. And this is going to be integral of the function 2 minus x minus y dy and we know that the value of y varies between 0 to 1. Now this gives me with respect to y2 is a constant and y is also uh, x is also a constant. So 2y minus xy minus y on integration is y square by 2 between the limits 0 to 1. Now this gives us 2 times of substitute the limit for your variable y. So it makes it as 2 times of 1 minus x times of 1 minus 1 by 2. This is my upper limit and lower limit vanishes because you have it to be equal to 0. So this is a constant. This is a constant 2 minus half. It is going to be 2 2s are 4 minus 1. 
So this makes it as 3 by 2 minus x. So my function f of x is going to be 3 by 2 times of x. And now let us complete this definition by providing the range of x 0 less than x less than 1. Now moving on to the next quantity which we require which is nothing but our f of y. Now how to estimate the value for my f of y? f of y is nothing but equal to um, the integration of f of x comma y with respect to dx because y means integrate with respect to the variable x. So this is going to be integral of 2 minus x minus y with respect to dx and x also varies between the limits 0 to 1. You can see a pattern similar over here. Here 2 was a constant and your x was a constant, y was the only variable. Here 2 is a constant and y is a constant, x is the only variable. So the limit also is going to be the same 0 to 1 and hence we know that this is also going to evaluate to the same quantity 3 by 2 but rather than the variable x this is going to give us the value y. So my f of y can be easily obtained as 3 by 2 minus y valid for 0 less than y less than 1. So I am done with the basic conditions of f of x and f of y. Now we move on to now estimate the next quantity called as e of x the mean value of the random variable x which is given by x into f of x dx. So this becomes x into f of x is the quantity which we just now estimated. This f of x is going to be 3 by 2 minus x. So it is 3 by 2 minus x. Be cautious you have enough over here. x is the only random variable. We want only f of x. Don't do a blunder by inserting your f of x comma y which involves two variable. This is wrong. So go for the single variable f of x the marginal density function. Now integrating between 0 to 1 where my x varies. This gives me 3 by 2 times of x on integration is x square divided by 2. x square on integration is x cube divided by 3 between the limits of 0 to 1. And now this is going to give me 3 divided by 4 upper limit minus lower limit is 1 minus 0 and 1 by 3 times of upper limit minus lower limit 1 minus 0. So it is 3 by 4 minus 1 by 3. The common LCM is going to be equal to 12. So you have it to be equal to 5 by 12. If you are not very comfortable, use your calculators to estimate this fraction and it can also be an easy way to estimate it. Now moving on to the next quantity, what we require is going to be E of Y. Now how to estimate your E of Y? E of Y is going to be your integral Y into F of Y D y now this is going to be integral y into my f of y was similar to my f of x 3 by 2 just the variable x replaced with y a dy and my y also varies between 0 to 1 now you can see that these two quantities are going to be very much identical and there's going to be just the change of variable x to that of y so i can also conclude that the answer for this quantity will again be equal to 5 by 12 now this estimates my e of x and e of y Next, move on to estimating e of x square and e of y square. e of x square is going to be given by, again, this is only one variable. So, only one integration input is going to be the ALU over here, x square. This is a being a function of x. I am inserting it as f of x dx. So, it is integral x square into the function is going to be equal to, what is my f of x? My f of x is going to be 3 by 2 minus x on integration between 0 to 1. Now this gives me 3 by 2 is a constant x square on integration is x cube divided by 3 and x cube on integration is x power 4 by 4 and apply the limit between 0 to 1 the 3 3 and cancels of 1 by 2 times of upper limit minus lower limit is 1 minus 0 minus 1 by 4 times of upper limit minus lower limit is 1 minus 0. Now you just have half minus 1 by 4 it is half minus quarter which is going to give you the same value as quarter 1 by 4. Now in a similar pattern we can see that or observe that my e of y square, what is my e of y square? e of y square is going to be integral y square into f of y dy. So the input is going to be y square f of y is going to be 3 by 2 minus y which we have obtained as the marginal density function and my y varies between 0 to 1. This is going to be much identical to this quantity. Hence, I can conclude that the answer for this also will be equal to the same 1 by 4. So, we are almost done with the left hand side. Just the one part which is going to be uh, required is going to be the quantity E of x, y. Now, this has two variables. 
so it needs two integrations the input has to be taken as x y and the function is going to be f of x comma y one variable with respect to x on integration and the other variable with respect to y on integration my x varies between 0 to 1 y varies between 0 to 1 cautious enough to input my f of x comma y not an f of x and f of y so 0 to 1 integral from 0 to 1 x y this is going to be the function 2 minus x minus y a dx a dy so now let me begin the integration with respect to the variable x because x is going to be taking the first value y is kept as a constant so 2 into x on integration 2 x square divided by 2 minus x into x x square on integration x cube divided by 3 minus x y is y is a constant x on integration is x square divided by 2 between the limits 0 to 1 now still waiting is my dy so i have 0 to 1 let me apply the upper limit minus the lower limit so this is going to be 1 minus 1 by 3 minus y by 2 times of your dy now this can be simplified furthermore 1 minus 1 by 3 so that makes it as y times of 3 minus 1 so it is 2 by 3 minus y by 2 which has to be integrated with respect to your 0 to 1 so now moving on to the next page we have y times of 2 by 3 minus this is going to be y by 2 y by 2 which has to be integrated with respect to 0 to 1 so 2 by 3 is a constant y on integration is y square by 2 minus 1 by 2 is a constant y square on integration is y cube divided by 3 apply the limit between 0 to 1 and now 2 and 2 can be cancelled off you have 1 by 3 times of upper limit minus lower limit 1 by 0 minus 1 by 2 3s are 6 and upper limit minus lower limit is 1 minus 0 so you have 1 by 3 minus 1 by 6 so half times of the value is going to be 1 by 6 again so we have got e of xy now my numerator is what is going to be my quantity which I have evaluated covariance of xy is given by e of xy minus e of x product e of y now e of xy was obtained as this is my e of xy which I obtained as 1 by 6 so I move on to substitute this 1 by 6 minus e of x what did we have for e of x my e of x was obtained as 5 by 12 and e of y was obtained as 5 by 12 let us move on to substitute these quantity 5 by 12 times of 5 by 12 so this makes it as 1 by 6 minus 25 divided by 144 now 144 goes in 624 times so it is 24 minus 25 so that makes it as minus 1 divided by 144 so i am done with the covariance which is going to be my numerator part now coming to the denominator part where i have sigma x sigma x is going to be root over variance of x and what do i know about variance of x variance of x is nothing but e of x square minus e of x the whole square now i know what is the value of e of x square which i estimated it priorly over here e of x square is going to be 1 by 4 so substituting it over there in the function we have this to be equal to 1 by 4 minus e of x was estimated just prior to it and the value of e of x was 5 by 12 so move and substitute it over here in this function so this is going to be 5 by 12 the whole square so it is 1 by 4 minus this is going to be 25 divided by 144 so now we have this to be equal to uh, the value over here is going to be 144 taken as the LCM and now we have this 11 divided by 144 this is variance of x so what do you think will be sigma x sigma x will be square root of 11 divided by square root of 144 I make it separate so that it will be easy for me to resubstitute it over here don't simplify it furthermore we will be requiring it for the cancellation now this is going to be the sigma x now i know that my sigma y is going to be root over variance of y and this is going to be the same as my uh, value which is going to be root 11 by root 144 now for the final value to be estimated i want rho of x comma y which is given by covariance of x comma y divided by sigma x product sigma y my numerator covariance of x comma y was obtained as minus 1 by 144 go substitute minus 1 divided by 144 
Now sigma x over here in the denominator was obtained as square root of 11 by square root of 144 square root of 11 by square root of 144. So the denominator's denominator goes to the numerator. Sigma y was also square root of 11 by square root of 144. Now square root of a into square root of a is nothing but a. So I have this as 144. You have a minus 1 divided by 144. A square root of 11 into square root of 11 makes it as 11. 144 can be cancelled off leaving you with minus 1 divided by 11. So my row of x comma y is obtained finally as minus 1 by 11. So we are completed the first question. We have found out the correlation coefficient between the variables x and y. The second question was what type of relationship does the variable x and y hold? We know that the row can take the value between minus 1 less than or equal to row of x comma y less than or equal to 1. When it moves towards your 1, we say it is going to be positive relationship or positive correlation which means that x increases y also increases or x decreases then y also decreases now as it moves towards minus 1 we say that the correlation or the relationship between the variables is going to be negative in nature so what do we mean be negative is it is going to be the reciprocal of the other so an increase in x causes a decrease in y or a decrease in x causes an increase in y so the type of relationship the variable x and y hold is going to be they are inversely related inversely related which means an increase in x causes a decrease in y a decrease in x causes an increase in y because the value which we have over here is negative which means the negative correlation shows the inverse relationship of the variables x and y thank you